And uh, at that time, uh, at that time, there was a lot of uh, uh, discrimination uh, <coughs> news in the papers, and usually it was from two politicians. And I guess it was because that the Japanese didn't have the franchise in those days. One was Elf, uh, Alderman Halford Wilson on the city council, and he was always saying something anti-Japanese. And the other was uh, Howard Green. He was a conservative MP in Ottawa. And the uh, reason I remember it because he was a prominent United Church uh, uh, member, uh, very prominent in the uh, <coughs> in the news for the church things. And the, then uh, in the paper, he was always in the, saying something about the anti-Japanese in Ottawa in the parliament. So, uh, but counteracting that, uh, not many peop uh, people, sp politicians spoke up for the Japanese, but there was a, when I was going to university, there was a professor named Henry Angus, and he was, uh, in his very thoughtful way, uh, uh, encouraged the students to uh, <clears throat> to ignore the anti-Japanese uh, feelings in those days, and uh, he he really encouraged the uh, Nisei students at, at university to uh, to <clears throat> to go about their studies in the, and try to uh, not get too discouraged over the discrimination. What do you remember about the start of the war? At the start of the war, I remember that. Uh, we were all expected to go into the uh, Canadian Officers Training Corps, the universities, and uh, we were all handed uniforms. And every every uh, well, two or three times a week, we went on marches and uh, different uh, exercises that we had to do, and uh, did, did the, what we called some military training. It was a colonel. Shrum, he was a physics professor. He was a, a colonel, and he was the head of the Canadian uh, CO. During the 1900s, there was an increase in people migrating to the United States in hope of a new home. A large number of people were Japanese. Isai is a first-generation Japanese immigrant. Many were looking for jobs in order to build a better life for themselves. Their success was met with a prejudice and an anti-Japanese movement. Discriminatory laws prevented Isai from becoming naturalized United States citizens. They were barred from owning land, marrying whites, and sending their children to schools attended by whites. Congress passed the Immigration Act of 1924, bearing any further immigration from Japan. The second generation Isai also faced discrimination. Even though they were born in the U.S., spoke English like other Americans, and often did well in school, these U.S. citizens of Japanese industry Ancestry faced discrimination in employment, housing, public accommodations, and social and civic activities. Japanese Americans were harshly discriminated against, and the U.S. Department of Justice and the War Department made it worse. They fed into what the citizens were saying and brought more prejudice to Japanese Americans. For example, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the FBI arrested a large number of Japanese Americans. They were held as potential threats to national security but they were taken to immigration and naturalization service detention stations and then to the Department of Justice internment camps to undergo hearings. The cases were given individual legal review, but the majority of Isai were imprisoned without evidence. Approximately 1,700 were released to War Recollection Authority incarceration camps after these hearings, but most were transferred to U.S. Army internment camps. Due to Japanese Americans being seen as disloyal, West Coast leaders pressured FDR to address the threat. In February 1942, the president issued Executive Order 99066, designating certain areas as war zones from which anyone might be removed for any reason. By September, the government evacuated more than 100,000 Japanese Americans on the West Coast. Evacuees, including both SI and Nessi, were forced to sell the property at a loss and allowed to take only necessary items. Japanese Americans were to leave designated military zones, but leaders in interior states objected. They did not want to become a dumping ground for enemy aliens. The War Department then initiated a policy of internment or temporary imprisonment of members of a specific group. Japanese American men, women, children were transported to camps in isolated locations such as Postdown, Arizona, and the Gila River Indian Reservation. Nessai and SA remained in the camps for the duration of the war. Families huddled into stark one-room shacks. 
The Japanese Americans in Hawaii escaped the discrimination others had faced in the other 49 states because they compromised one-third of a multicultural society. This is ironic for Hawaii to be their safe haven because Pearl Harbor occurred in Hawaii. One of the first orders given after Pearl Harbor occurred was that Japanese Americans must leave designated military zones because leaders in interior states objected. Governor of Arizona insisted his state refuses to become a dumping ground for enemy aliens. The War Department then initiated a policy of internment or temporary imprisonment of members of a specific group in isolated locations such as Paulston, Arizona, the Gila River Indian Reservation, as well as Manazar, California, for the duration of the war. At first, Japanese Americans were not accepted into the armed forces. People would use the term Japs to dehumanize Japanese culture. However, the ban was lifted in 1943, and many eagerly enlisted and count- countered the belief because the all Nisai 44-second regional combat team fought in the Italian campaign and became the most decorated military unit in American history. The 442nd helped counter the nation that Japanese Americans were not loyal citizens. The 442nd fought the Germans and rescued 211 men. More than 30 men were killed, and many were wounded and sent to the hospitals. The campaign resulted in an estimate of 800 casualties. Then the German was talking, giving instructions, and pretty soon the machine guns went up and hit the uh, Norman Shibata's backpack. And this German was giving instructions that I found, saw him. So I shot him, shot him in the legs and knocked him down. And he turned around, he saw me. He made a mistake of picking up his gun. So when he picked up his gun, I shot him again. But I hit him down in the lower part. He knocked him down and he was hollering for help. So he says, well, we know where the Germans are, let's go back, get back. So he's heading for our lines. I can hear the Germans hollering and screaming for help. Nobody came. Pretty soon I got part off of our ridge and boom. Something went off, the explosion went down to where he was at. No more crying. No more. So it, uh, then when I went back to see, we took the hill back. He had stuck a grenade under his head and blew his head off. So for him just to end the, the suffering, that suffering. he knew that he wasn't going to be saved, and so he, he killed himself. That's why I wear this medal for him too. He'll never go home. But I felt sorry for him. But the precedent set in Korematsu versus the United States was that in 1944, the Supreme Court upheld the government's wartime internment policy. The court held that the military order was justified for security reasons. Three judges dissented. Justice Frank Murphy wrote that internment falls into the ugly abyss of racism. Not until 1988 did the government offer an apology in $20,000 payments to surviving internees. This was not the right decision. Uprooting people out of their homes and placing them in awful conditions should not be just. On February 19, 1976, President Gerald Ford signed a proclamation formally terminating Executive Order 9066 and apologizing for the internment, stated, We now know what we should have known then. Not only was that the evacuation was wrong, but Japanese Americans were and are loyal Americans. The Civil Liberties Act of 1988 was signed on August 10, 1988 by Ronald Reagan. It is a United States federal law that granted reparations to Japanese Americans who had been interned by the United States government during World War II. The act granted each surviving internee $20,000 in compensation. Were forcibly removed from their homes and placed in makeshift internment camps. This action was taken without trial, without jury. It was based solely on race, for these 120,000 were Americans of Japanese descent. Yes, the nation was then at war, struggling for its survival, and it's not for us today to pass judgment upon those who may have made mistakes while engaged in that great struggle. Yet we must recognize that the internment of Japanese Americans was just that, 
a mistake. For throughout the war, Japanese Americans in the tens of thousands remained utterly loyal to the United States. Indeed, scores of Japanese Americans volunteered for our armed forces, many stepping forward in the internment camps themselves. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team, made up entirely of Japanese Americans, served with immense distinction to defend this nation, their nation. Yet back at home, the soldiers' families were being denied the very freedom for which so many of the soldiers themselves were laying down their lives. Congressman Norman Mineta, with us today, was 10 years old when his family was interned. In the congressman's words, my own family was sent first to Santa Anita Racetrack. We showered in the horse paddocks. Some families lived in converted stables, others in hastily thrown together barracks. We were then moved to Heart Mountain, Wyoming, where our entire family lived in one small room of a rude tar paper barrack. Like so many tens of thousands of others, the members of the Mineta family lived in those conditions not for a matter of weeks or months, but for three long years. The legislation that I am about to sign provides for a restitution payment to each of the 60,000 survivors, Japanese surviving Japanese Americans of the 120,000 who were relocated or detained. Yet no payment can make up for those lost years. So what is most important in this bill has less to do with property than with honor. For here, we admit a wrong. Here, we reaffirm our commitment as a nation to equal justice.